She came in with the tubes. She couldn't barely walk. She came up to the prayer line, and I prayed for her. She fell into the seats. The Holy Spirit hit her so hard. She leveled out the oxygen tank. She leveled out the breathing thing. I got pictures that I can show you. We, we stepping on it. You know, she left completely free. I mean, just Ramirez, what is, why is spiritual warfare so important? I think so many people think that they can just go to church on Sundays and go home and read their Bible and they're good. Like they're, they don't have to do anything else. But how do you know like when it's time to go to warfare and why is that important? But I, I think I think I think to me, it's, it's I think to me, uh, spiritual warfare, the closer you want to get to Jesus. Now, if you want to be a lukewarm Christian and live in the projects when you get to heaven. Uh, you know, there's projects in heaven. You can live over there in a Section 8, low-income housing in, in, in heaven because you ain't doing nothing for Jesus. You just made heaven by the skin of your teeth. But if you if you really want to be a vessel of honor and you want to you want to give God glory to the life he's given you and let and say, Lord, because you, you sent Jesus and you gave me salvation and you and you sh and, and not only salvation but you give me a purpose you give me a destiny mm -hmm. and and you want to fulfill that purpose you want to fulfill that destiny right i think i think the closer you want to get to jesus the more the spiritual warfare shows up the more the more the opposition shows up the more the battlefield show up but great is he that lives in you and i think that you'll make jesus christ proud in the end of your journey if you fight the mm -hmm. good fight Instead of being a lukewarm pocketbook Christian, you sit on church on pocket like a pocketbook on Sundays, then why not be God's best, right? And stand up for the battle. Get off the love boat. The love boat, the season is canceled. Get off the love boat. Get on the battleship and fight the good fight and make Jesus Christ proud. Because in the end of my story, right, God is going to say, I could have picked any other devil worship and I decided to pick you. Why? Yeah. Why? Why you didn't? Why did you rep, did represent me the way you were supposed to represent me? You know, why you live by the opinions of people or the opinions of others or the opinions of the world, but you never live by the way I wanted you to live. And I think that will be a sad moment for me when I get to the heaven and I stand in front of a mighty God and I have to give him a lukewarm account of what he did for me and I did nothing for him. And you know what God always told me, my sister, God said, John, I will always do my part, but I'll never do yours. Wow. You know, I and think that's it why it's mm -hmm. like, um, you know, just what you're talking about. It's really this like fear of the Lord, right? You know, it's like this mm -hmm. reverence and awe for God. But I think so many people have a misconception of what fear of the Lord is. But, you know, can you kind of speak but on fear, that? Fear, fear, the, fear of the Lord. I, I was hearing, I, I was driving my, my, I was driving, I was driving my, my wife steps on to school today. And mm -hmm. I was listening to, uh, and his name is Andrew. I love the guy. Young, I think he's going to be a special young man. And I, I was listening to David Jeremiah, David Jeremiah today on my way on my way to school to drop drop him off, and he said the fear of the Lord is it is that if you live by the fear of the Lord is not you, that you're not scared of God, the fear of the Lord you don't want to disappoint him. And I think that's the coolest thing. When I heard that, I was like, man, I was I had a hallelujah going. Uh, I had a hallelujah going this morning in a praise and a, and I had a I had a step on my uh I had a step on my toes and my feet saying, Lord, man, I I help me not to ever disappoint you. Amen. Well, not that I'm perfect, because none of none of us are, but be genuine. Be genuine. Yeah. And I think I think the walk the, it's like it's it's like I don't know, it's like it's like being a mother, right? your, your mommy. No, I'm not. Not yet. All right. So, so well, not yet. So, a mommy is like, you know, she has a baby, right? She's gonna have a baby, and the closer she's here to the nine month, the harder the labor pains, the harder the, 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 the carrying the baby. But, but in the end, right, uh, when she's gonna have a baby, right? I mean, the pain doesn't get easier. The pain don't get easier. They get the pain get harder, right? But you push, right? You push through, right? And then and the pain goes away because the joy that you get that you get a beautiful baby. You know, how much more that the purpose and the destiny that God deposited inside of you that you push, you push, you push. And in the end, you can say like Paul said, I fought the good fight. I'm going home to get my crown. I'm going home to get my crown. I'm home. I'm going home to see the king. I'm not talking about no Burger King. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about no, no Michael Jackson, the king. I ain't talking about no Elvis either. And you're going to go see the real king. Amen. Mm -hmm. So how awesome is that that you push your way through and you get to the promised land, which is heaven. Mm -hmm. But between every promised land, I said this last thing, mm -hmm. between every promised land, there's always going to be a devil. Wow. That's why you need fire press, for real. That's right. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I, I got I me mean, this thing here for your marriage, this thing here for your finances. How do, how, how do you get, how is it that, that, that you know, you, you, you tie, you give offerings in the church and you should, 
and I and people say, "Why well, we don't the Old Testament tithe anymore?" I said, "Listen, if you lived under if you lived under the law and you had to give ten percent, how much more on the grace you should give God?" Amen. Yeah, and, and you break the conquer worm, you break the locust out of your life, you break the poverty spirit out of your life, you the strongholds and bondage. You know, I got prayers for kids in schools and colleges. You know, here that you pray. I pray my daughter to college. I pray my daughter every time my daughter wanted to give up, every time she wanted to drop out, every time she wanted to say. This ain't for me. I pray my daughter through because I know how to pray the prayers to break the hindrance and the delay and the blockages and the clutter and the distraction in her mind. I know how to break those things off her. And today my daughter can hold in her hand a four-year college degree. You know, I don't even have one, but I live my I live my life through my daughter's eyes. If she have one, it feels like mm -hmm. I have one. Wow, that's incredible. And it's encouraging to know that we have all of these things at our fingertips. We just have to utilize them. They're in the tool belt. We just got to take them out. Could you maybe share just like one or two other testimonies that you have heard? Um, maybe people who weren't living this out in their life, but then understood the power of prayer and just kind of like that breakthrough that they had. Well, well, I, 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 I was in Bak I was in Bakersfield, uh, California, uh, I think about a year ago, and uh, uh, this woman came in. She came in with a little oxygen, she, like small oxygen tank. She had some things in her nose. She couldn't breathe. She had four stage cancer, and she came in. And this whole cancer thing ran her family. She came in with the tube. She couldn't barely walk. She came up to the prayer line, and I prayed for her. She fell into the seats. The Holy Spirit hit her so hard. She left without the oxygen tank. She left without the breathing thing. I got That's pictures awesome. I can show you. We we stepping on it. You know, she left completely free. There was a Muslim lady that came into uh, one of my meetings in Queens a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. She said she came up to me. She said, I got six months to live. She said, I got four days cancer. She said, mm -hmm. I said, I said, Are you Christian? She said, no, I'm Muslim. I said, What have your God done for you? Allah. She said, Nothing. The the, mm -hmm. the, the doctor said, Go home, make peace with my family. And, and, and make make my arrangements to die. I said, well, my Jesus said he can heal you and he could deliver you if you renounce Islam. And she said, she said, sure enough. I prayed for this lady. I saw her two years. I prayed for this lady, lay hands on her, pray. The power of prayer. This mm -hmm. is what I'm talking about. You see, but you have to have target, arrows, precision prayers, mm -hmm. not general prayers, precision prayers. That's what this book is so important. Precision prayers. You know, aim it's like being a spiritual sniper. It's being yeah. like special ops. These kind of prayers will break down the enemy, will hit the root of the issue, uproot it. Then you put God's best there. And I pray for this lady. A year later, I came back. Who's standing at the door? This lady with a big Kool-Aid smile. And I'm like, who's this lady? I don't know her. She said, you remember me? And I was like, well, I don't. I said, I really don't remember you because I preached so many prayers. She said, I was supposed to die six months ago. And she said to me, and she said, but you pray for me. And I went back to the doctors and there was not even a trace of cancer. Wow. And, and she said, I bring more people to church now than my own pastor. That's, <laughs> a, that's a grateful person. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, so five oh, prayers yeah. is about being a spiritual sniper. You yeah. know, it's the manual that the devil hates, but it's the manual that gets you to the finish line mm. and your victory. Amen. Well, for everybody who's watching, to get that manual, we'll link it down below. Um, Vision Ramirez, this has been incredible and so so important. You know, people are facing so many obstacles. And you're getting, that, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting, you get, and you're getting the devil's playbook in here. <laughs> you're getting the devil's playbook <laughs> because I know every trick, every plot, every I know every trick, every plot, every scheme, every while. I know how the devil, how the, how the, the devil have old system, how he dresses something new, and you think it's new. I know the patterns and cycle. I know the mind of the enemy. I lived there for 25 years. I know witchcraft to the highest level. I lived in the shadows of the demonic for 25 years. In the dark side, I got married in Halloween. I had a demonic wedding. I did it all in the witchcraft world. And I'm telling you, I know, I, I know by the power of the Holy Spirit how to stop the devil on his tracks. So you don't have to live a life of mediocre in Christ. But you can live that life of victory that God designed for you. But you have to know how to fight the good fight. But Jesus said one thing to the Israelites. I have a promised land for you. I promise you that. With milk and honey. Mm -hmm. But you have to cross over and fight the fight. But I give you the promised land. God already given you the victory. You just got to go get it and fight for it. Because you partners with God. You partner with the, with the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to do your part. God will never do your part. He will always do his. And God told me the last thing I leave you with this. God said, John, I will always be on your side. My concern is, would you always be on my side? 
Wow. Wow. And I said, Lord, as long as I can breathe, I never quit on you for 23 years. As long as I can breathe, I will do my part to be on your side. Mm -hmm. So me and heaven, we clap together. <laughs> I love it. Amen. Well, Amen. to get that, that enthusiasm and that confidence, man, in your prayers and in the Lord, make sure you get a copy of Fire Prayers. Amen. Get, a, get a copy. You won't regret it. And if yep. you don't like the book, my sister here, she will give you a refund. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only kidding. You yeah. love that book so much. I'm, I'm, I'm knowing my heart that you will love, not because I wrote it, but you'll love, you will love that book so much. You'll buy an extra copy for someone else to be blessed. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And thank you, Evangelist Ramirez. for. God bless you, my sister. Thank you so much for having me on. And may Absolutely. the Lord bless you, keep you, protect you, and prosper you. In Jesus' name.